Mark, good morning. How are you, my man? Hey, Rob. How are you, sir? Thanks I, I'm me. doing good. Excited that this movie is finally coming out, people getting to see this for the uh, for the first time? Absolutely. It's such an important movie. And it's such a powerful movie. Um, you know, we were, wanted to make a tribute to these guys, uh, not only that all lost their lives in Operation Red Wing, but everybody who's ever, you know, walked into a recruiting office or signed up to defend our country, you, or, or even their community. It really is a tribute to anybody who's ever served anywhere. You obviously knew the story of the movie when you when you did this project. You knew his story and whatnot, but... but was there anything that came up in the in the filming or the process of making this movie that really opened your eyes or that you really didn't expect or was a surprise to you about the whole situation? Yeah, I mean, I've always been a huge supporter of the military, especially, you know, the soldiers that go out there and defend our country. Uh, and the guys that are out there on the front line. I've been to Afghanistan. But, you know, after meeting Marcus, meeting these other team guys, uh, and making this film, I really started to have a much more clear understanding of what they really do uh, and the risks that they take and the, the, the services that they provide on a daily basis. And, uh, you know, seeing Marcus, you know, continue to be out there, if he could be, it, considering what he went through and all the injuries he sustained, and even after uh, 2005 in Afghanistan when he was rescued, uh, he went to the hospital rehab for a year only to go back to, uh, to Iraq and to get his knees blown out again. And uh, if he could, he would still go out there and serve today. And people who don't know this story, in a nutshell, uh, the, the guy who you play, uh, Marcus Luttrell is his name, he was on a mission with a, a bunch of other uh, SEALs. And, and Actually, the mission was only four guys in the beginning. Four guys were plunked into the Hindu Kush and sent to uh, capture or kill a high-ranking Taliban official. And then the mission went south when they were compromised and, uh, you know, found by two, two uh, little boys and a goat herder. And then they had to make a decision whether they were going to terminate the compromise or, you know, go to war with these 300 villagers that were a couple hundred yards away. And they decided to let the kids go and engage. And uh, and then uh, there was a rescue attempt, uh, which also went horribly wrong. So uh, altogether, 19 uh, American soldiers were killed on that day, but uh, it was a four-man mission. You must have thought about this if you were in a situation like that where you're with uh, your four guys who are on your team and uh, a couple of boys and a goat herder find you and uh, you know you're just basically laying down in, in, in the middle of uh, the mountains or whatever and they come across you now they, they may go back and tell everyone hey there's some Americans over there and then it, 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 it turns into a firefight or do you, or they may not you don't want to kill an innocent person if you don't have to but uh, if, if you I've obviously have probably thought about yourself in this situation, w what would you have done in, in of that course. case? Well, you know, it's easy to think about it, you know, from the couch or the next day and weigh out all your options. But being in a situation like that, understanding that the rules of engagement are constantly changing. But what I do understand and what I got to, to learn about these guys is these guys are gunfighters. They signed up to fight and engage with the enemy. That's what they want. They want the insurmountable odds. They want the, you know, the impossible. They want the loudest, coldest gunfight. And so they don't want to kill kids. That's not what they're there for. They're there to engage in the enemy. So they want 400 against four. And normally they come out of it uh, on top. And this was a, a situation where, you know, um, it didn't turn out in their favor for whatever reason. You, uh, uh, But they would be damned if they were going to kill kids as opposed to engaging, and they didn't care how many of the enemy. You have gone to Afghanistan, and, and, and for people who don't know the story, an Afghani guy actually uh, ended up helping this. Uh, uh, this you know. Yeah, which is the most, I think, one of the most amazing parts of the movie. Because, you know, normally when people look at the news, they say, okay, we're at war with Afghanistan, but we're not at war with Afghanistan. We're at war with the Taliban, who's in Afghanistan, and the Afghan people are also, a lot of them are also at war with the Taliban. And there is a 2,000-year-old Pashtunwali custom where if somebody's in danger or in need, that they come to their aid, despite the fact that these guys were putting their own lives at risk, their own village, their own women and children uh, were killed to rescue a complete stranger, which to me is an amazing act of compassion and bravery, and, uh, and what an honorable man Muhammad Gulab is. Lone Survivor comes out today. Before I let you go, Mark, uh, Entourage movie still on track to start filming next month. That's the latest word uh, that I yep. got. Yep, there's going to be some shooting this month or next month, and then we'll be complete in April and hopefully ready for an October, November release. Uh, Mark, good luck with the movie today, Lone Survivor, and I appreciate you coming on, my man. Thank you, sir. I appreciate it. Thank you, Mark Wahlberg.